The order confirmation page of the Hansel and Petal site processes the post array after the user submits the form from the Builder Bouquet page. But the script in this page doesn't do anything to preserve the data, so there would be no data for this Confirm Order button to process. Now we won't be going as far as building a complete e-commerce site in this course, but let's see how to use session variables to preserve data from page to page. So let's go to the editing program and it's order.php that we've got open. Before you can use session variables, you need to create a PHP session with session start. And we're going to need the session variables in this page, even if it's accessed without clicking the bouquet submit button. So session start must go outside the if statement at the top. So let's put it on line two. Session underscore start then an empty pair of parentheses and a semicolon. That gives us access to a session and to session variables. The data that needs to be preserved is currently stored in the color, quantity and image associative arrays, which have been initialized as empty arrays just before the for each loop on lines four through six. The session array is one of PHP's superglobals that's generated automatically so we no longer need to initialize the arrays up here. So let's get rid of those three lines. Now to convert color into a session variable, we need to add an underscore after the dollar sign, then session, all in capital letters, and then the actual variable name becomes the array key, and that goes in square brackets and also as a string. So this is now a session variable called color, and it actually becomes a multidimensional array. This second pair of square brackets will add the flower name. So the first time that the loop runs, this becomes session color color lilies. And the next time that we come to a color one, it becomes session color gerbera daisies, and so on. So we need to do exactly the same with the quantity and image arrays. So let's make that a session array, or a session variable rather, part of the session array. So it's the current variable name that becomes the array key, and it goes in quotes inside the square brackets. So we've now converted the color, quantity, and image arrays to session variables inside the for each loop. So what we now have to do is replace all the variables that use color, quantity, and image with those session variables in the rest of the script. And the simple way to do that is with your editing program's find and replace dialog box. So I'm in Dreamweaver, edit, find and replace, I'm going to look in the current document, search in the source code, and I'm going to find color, and I'm going to replace it with dollar underscore then session, all in capitals, square bracket, quote, color. That looks fine to me, and then just replace all. It's done everything that I wanted to do then open my find and replace box again. And what I need to do this time is to find quantity, dollar quantity. And I want to replace that with dollar underscore session. Make sure I spell session correctly. And then quantity goes as the string, it becomes the key. That's spelled correctly, replace all and once more with feeling, this time we do it for image and it will be session and the array key will be image and replace all. And then I can close that rather annoying box there. And if I just scroll through my page, I should see that yes, it's been replaced as session variables and they work just exactly the same as the variables that we've been working with right up to now. So, the moment of truth, let's save the page and go to our browser. We'll go to Build a Bouquet, 
we'll build a very quick bouquet only a couple of items we'll add it to our basket we've got calla lilies and sunflowers let's go to our designers and come back to view my order the only problem is we've got this undefined variable price here now I can assure you this isn't something that I planned but errors do happen what we need to do is to find out why price is undefined it's not one of our session variables so that gives me a little bit of a clue as to why it might be undefined but the answer always lies in the code so let's go back to our editing program and we need to scroll up price was in the top block there it is there's the price array and a lot of editing programs allow you to match opening and closing braces and opening and closing parentheses in Dreamweaver it's called balance braces and it's this little icon here so if I click that the first time it gives me those opening and closing parentheses the next time let's see what that shows us and it shows me that we're inside this if block so the price is only being set if we've submitted the form so that's the answer let's grab the price definition we just need to take that we need to cut it we can delete that line and it just needs to go outside of that closing curly brace of the if block paste it back we'll save then we'll go back to our browser and we'll view my order again and there we are the variable is no longer undefined we've got the price and the session variables have also been retained so the values stored in the session variables preserve the data submitted from the Builder Bouquet page wherever you go in the site, and they could be used to complete the checkout process. However, the purpose isn't to show you how to build an online store. The code you would need for that is far more complex. The purpose here has been to show you how to preserve the value of form data as the user moves from page to page within a site. You can also use session variables to store any data. For example, you could store someone's name and user privileges after they log in. But you also need a way to delete the data when it's no longer needed. And we'll look at that next.